Hello, everyone. This is Gator Tack. I am Mercedes. This is Stephen Crane. And we are here. It is a lovely morn, uh, Monday, just starting out the afternoon, actually. It's 12.03. Um, the weather's kind of nice outside, actually. It's actually, too hot outside. Today. <laughs> a little bit too hot, I agree. Um, but yeah, how was your weekend, Stephen? Did you do anything exciting? No, not much. Just uh, take it easy. That's my usual weekend routine. Oh, okay. Cool. You? Um, what did I do this weekend? Uh, actually, I don't think I did too much either. I just kind of stayed at home. I watched um, this movie that I had been planning on watching for a while, but I completely forgot about until I remembered. It wasn't uh, the faculty, was it? Huh? That's what we talked about last week. Oh, no, I didn't get the chance to, but I will write that down because I actually forgot about that one also. Um, I actually watched Wild Tales. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, I don't think so. It's not the one where they dig the holes, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> um, that's Where the Wild Things. That's it, right? Yeah, Where the Wild Things Are. Um, wild Tales is actually a foreign film. I think it comes from Spain. And it's six short uh, story segments about distressed people. And it's, it's really great. If you get a chance, I would definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah. Anyways, moving on to news. Um, in light of this holiday season, Halloween's coming up, um, we're going to be doing some spooky news articles, I, I suppose you would say. Uh, the first one um, is about household spiders. And it's something that I have trouble with. I hate spiders. I am constantly trying to get them out of my house. But apparently, uh, some spiders, their natural habitat is your house. So, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> they seem to show up there a lot. Mm hmm It's a pretty big one in the picture in that article, though. I don't know about that as a regular house spider, or is that just a real zoomed in? I think it might be really zoomed in, but it is still, it's really scary. Like, as I was reading the article at first, I couldn't stop to look at the pictures of the spiders. It just freaked me out. So, yeah. Um, but it has eight facts about misunderstood household spiders that you might want to know. Um, What's the first fact? Our first fact is human and house spiders have history. So apparently, spiders were actually here first. Um, they, they were here even before humans were here. And they predate dinosaurs, so if anything, we're, we should be the ones leaving the house. <laughs> um, Does that just mean they just haven't evolved over the, all the years, or um, were spiders different? I mean, yeah, or is just they're the same thing? Like, uh, I think reptiles are kind of like that, right? Um, I think, well, it says here in the article that they started off as marine animals, and then I guess over time they evolved to what they are now. But I don't want to imagine what they were like in like prehistoric times. Probably humongous. Yeah, it would be was fantasy spiders, things. you know. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that what the article is trying to get across is maybe we should be a little bit more respectful because we are living in their home, not them invading ours. So what, what's, what's that second fact you got there? Um, putting a house spider outside could actually kill it. So as I was saying before, your house could be the spider's natural habitat, and that means that they won't know how to thrive in the outside world. Yeah. So just put them in a different room? I suppose so. Or stomp them, or what's what's <laughs> the what's the solution? Um, I guess the solution is try to learn to live with them. But if they get too close, like if you find a spider on your bed, that's their fault if they die. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the third fact: not all spiders in houses are house spiders. So, despite there being some spiders that don't know how to thrive outside, there are spiders that have creeped into your house and they need to leave immediately. <laughs> um. It says wolf spiders are usually outdoors, but they wander inside. Yes. With its eyes looking at you. I, oh. oh, they're actually different size. There's like two big eyes and like a smaller. I thought it was like all a bunch of small eyes. It's horrifying and I can't stand to look at it. But yes, beware of uh, wolf spiders. They creep into your home and they do not belong there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the next fact is not all house spiders look alike. So there are different kinds of house spiders that you might come across in your home. Um, big ones and small ones? Yeah, big ones and small ones. Uh, they have the American house spider, um, 
which measures four to eight millimeters long, and it's yellowish brown. And they have tall, they have a tall, round abdomen and two rows of four eyes. Um, so, so that's what I thought because the picture showed a two and a, s and a set of four. Uh huh. So that was is that like not all of them have the same eye thing, or are there the other eyes hidden somewhere that we don't even see? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't put anything past spiders. They're they're ugh. Or in the back of their head, maybe <laughs> literally. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Um, and then they also have the domestic house spider. Uh, this one is six to twelve millimeters in length and it's reddish brown. Um, yeah, and then there's the covered spider, and then we have the black house spider also. So there's a few spiders on here. We could post the, the link to the article on our blog so you guys get a chance to acquaint yourselves with your household guest. Um, five, spiders don't use plumbing to sneak inside. Yeah, so usually, you can find spiders trapped in sinks or tubs, and people would assume that maybe they came in through that way, but that is not true. Um, they probably just got stuck there looking for water. Yeah. Apparently, they're really thirsty creatures. Oh, yeah, I mean, if the water's flowing that way, you know, <laughs> they'd be more likely to come out of the tap than to, to, for the drain. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? Because is it say drain or just say tap? Um, I what was that? It's just. It just Pipes, sinks, and tubs. Pipe. Okay, okay, that's just generic. Okay, because I was like, if they came out coming in, I could see that. If they s they fell in and then like, but mm -hmm. even though pipes are pretty, they're not small enough, I think. Yeah. Even the small spiders. I think the only thing is like you won't be able to see that the spider like could have gotten stuck in there. Like if you just turn on your sink and a spider flies out, like instantly you're gonna think like, oh my god, this spider definitely was intruding on my personal space. <laughs> um. Six, spiders, house spiders pose very little danger. To us. <laughs> to us, yes. Uh, the good thing about house spiders, actually, is that they are there to um, kill off other pests, like bugs. Bugs that you might not want in your house. So it's kind of a, a trade-off there. Like flies. Yeah, do you want the fly or do you want do the you want spider? a flying bug or do you want a flying <laughs> bug? I mean, like, I feel like you can get away from the spider if you had to, but... The the fly, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's do? no getting away. They're just, they follow you. They walk right with you. Do, 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 do spiders get mosquitoes? <laughs> um, I think some of them do. I think I'm mosquitoes kind of sure. big, right? But I don't think that would matter. If they got stuck in the web, it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. And um, building off of that, how spiders can be helpful. So, like they, um, we mentioned before, uh, spiders are a potent defense against agricultural pests like aphids, moths, and beetles. So that's something to keep in consideration when you're thinking about smushing that little rascal. <laughs> um, yeah. And our last fact, there are humane ways to manage house spiders. So if you still cannot stand the spider being in your house, um, you, there are other ways besides killing them, you know? Um, this does remind me of, I don't remember if it was SNL or Mad TV skit, where they had the uh, the, the cockroach trap. Do you, I, do you I, I haven't seen that. It was basically killing in the worst way possible. So oh. it's, it, like, it shows <laughs> like, it, it was like a cartoon graphic, which uh -huh. is like, it enters the trap. Then all of its limbs, are it like does everything but kill it. <laughs> like, oh and it's God. like, it gets pretty bad. And then it just sits there, it's just screaming like, ah! Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it will slowly die, because it, it lives for like months or whatever, but even like, like even if it loses all that, I think it's like, don't they survive for a few days even if their head gets cut off mm -hmm. like cockroaches or something like that? It was just kind of like, instead of just the quick kill, it was like, it was this really elaborate device. Mm -hmm. Well, don't do that to your that's household not humane. spiders. That's not humane at all. Um, yeah, so since they don't sneak in from outside, obviously s sealing off potential entry points isn't going to do anything. Um, but you might want to try methods to shoo them away into the garage or crawl spaces or a shed. Places where you are usually not. <laughs> so that way you guys can find a way to balance out living together and um, you won't have to be terrified in your home. We have a little Michael Jordan reference here that <laughs> you can't stop them, but you can only hope to contain them. Um, though I think if you just wait long enough, they'll get injured and old and you just won't you know, have to worry about them anymore. Yeah. 
keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and moving on to our second news article. This one is um, actually not so lighthearted. So um, October is known as Black Cat Month. And while that sounds like it could be something really awesome and cool, it's actually not. Um, apparently, October is the month that people not only hunt um, and terrorize black cats, but like all black furred animals. Are people still doing this actually, or is this just one of those articles to get you, you know, hyped? No, actually it's a pretty big issue. Um, animal shelters actually won't even um, let people adopt black furred animals during the month. Huh. So yeah, if you have a black furred friend, please keep him in, in inside um, during Halloween to um, ensure their safety. I mean, Halloween is fun, but some people go a little bit overboard <laughs> sometimes. So with that, I think we are going to uh, cut to a break, but we will be right back. You are listening to Gator Attack with Mercedes. And Steven, noon to one every Monday. All right. Hi, I'm Richard Roundtree. I'm a breast cancer survivor. Yes, you heard me right. Men get breast cancer too, and men need just as much help understanding what their doctors tell them as women do. But where do you go to get that kind of help? Go to breastcancer.org, a special place on the Internet that helps you understand the kind of cancer you have, your treatment options, and all the big words your doctor uses. Breastcancer.org is the first place to go the minute you find out you have breast cancer. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are a bit exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Fact is, high blood pressure contributes to 200,000 American deaths each year. And a third of those who have high blood pressure don't know it. If they did, it'd be simple to treat. Call the American Heart Association at 1-800-AHA-USA-1 or visit AmericanHeart.org on the web to learn more. Better still, ask your doctor to check your blood pressure. If you run with those scissors... It's the least you can do. Welcome back to Gator Attack. This is Steven. And this is Mercedes. All right, so uh, getting back into it here before we left for the break... Um, we were talking about Black Cat Month, which is not as cool as it sounds. Um, so the article we have here um, gives a little bit more background info on that. Uh, it talks about violence and uh, the no adoption of black cats, or really it's moved to any black furred animals during the month. Um, so uh, a little bit about the violence. Um, Statistics on black cat, uh, cat torture during October are lacking. Most of the stories are hearsay and some are no doubt. Um, have been drummed up simply for the shock value. But um, young minds are vulnerable, particularly the minds of youths who have themselves been abused. So... Um, well, what, are, what are some of these myths? Some of the myths, um, I think it goes back to some uh, foreign cultures associate black cats with like black magic and evil and stuff like that. So stuff like that. So I during cross your path. Mm -hmm. So Bad it's a little bit generally. superstition, a little bit having to do with like um, ancient cultures and stuff like that. So they're actually um, in other countries, sometimes they'll do rituals with black cats. Um, and I, I guess some of that folklore type stuff moves over into the states and people just think it's cool to do. Yeah, we have a Greek mythology had taught that a woman named Galenthia, also known as Galen, was turned into a cat and became a priestess at a temple of Hectate, the Dark Mother, known as the Mother of Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. That's the Greek end, at least. Yeah. But so people hear these stories. Um, I would assume it's usually like adolescents and then they think, like, let's do something really cool and spooky and witchy this Halloween 
but it's really it, it's harmful to the animals. I, I, I hear more horrible stories around Fourth of July than I hear October, though. So really. Well, then, well, fireworks start getting involved. Oh, that is true. And that might just be animals in general, but I think black cats especially are more targeted in that particular time. Hmm. That's interesting. I hadn't heard of that. But I'll keep my eyes peeled. <laughs> Hopefully you won't see anything, though. Hopefully I won't see anything. That is my hope. Um, or is it? <laughs> who, who, who could tell? <laughs> um, but yeah. So please, please. If you have blackbird animals, keep them indoors because they could be susceptible to violence this holiday season. But uh, once Halloween is passed, moving into November, animal shelters should start uh, letting people adopt blackbird animals again. And your cats, if they are outdoor, you can set them free to roam the streets again safely. <laughs> All so right. what else do we have today? So today, um, I thought that we could do uh, the Story Manic. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that, uh, Story Manic. Well, why don't you start setting up as you explain? All right. So the Story Manic is this game that I got from uh, the Brainstorm. And uh, it's essentially a storytelling game. So what you do is you have um, these cards. They're gold and copper. And um, let me just fact check here. So the, you do two gold cards, and they create a character. Um, so they could be just character traits or personality traits. And then you have two copper cards, and those are situations. So they lead you into a story. Um, so something I thought would be fun for us to do is to try and tell a story using these cards. And um, yeah. See where, see where they lead us. But the twist is, since it's uh, October, I was thinking it could be a spooky story. Yeah, that's, uh, that seems fair enough. <laughs> All right. So um, if you would like to go first, I can explain the rules. So what you're going to do. Does it matter what color or just anything? Uh, so the gold ones are going to be the character that so you I get. So I start with the, char with the yeah. gold card. So All you right. pick two random gold cards. Oh, do I get to pick or do I combine them? Um, well, now that you've got two, yeah. So, they're they're. Do I do I reveal them now? Yes. Okay. I I I have the host and the judge. All right. So, do with that what you will. Create a character off of that. I'll give you some time. Um. All right, and then I am going to choose my character here. Okay. So my character is a person in love, and an imposter. Okay, so so let me take a try at this, I guess. So um, so let's say the character is a ju a literal judge uh -huh. um, of law, and they are hosting a party. Would that make sense? Yeah. As the host, okay. That so I sense. I am a judge hosting a party, and do we have a location or do I yet or does the, or does that, those do a location? Um, they might do a location. I have actually not played this yet you were the first one okay. to play okay. with me <laughs> i don't know if i if i want to set the scene because I, I would just say oh spooky mansion or something it'd make a lot of sense but oh, if you feel it, but if i need a draw for that then yeah. so do, so now do i go to the the, the bronze the copper, yeah. two right two let's see what we got here i've got <laughs> a roller coaster and a recognized by zoo animal all right so this is I'm host. I'm a eccentrically rich judge <laughs> who's hosting a party at the uh, the, the the spooky theme park. I, this is turning into a Scooby Doo story really quick. Ooh, but perfect. It's, but it's recognized by a zoo animal. But I. This is about my character or about the story. About the story. All right. So I'm gonna guess. I don't know it, but you've been recognized by a zoo animal because you're an imposter. I've been recognized by a zoo animal. Yes, at this theme park that also has a roller coaster. Huh, okay. Now it might be haunted by that same zoo animal, probably a gorilla or a, a snake man or something. Maybe. We don't know yet though. <laughs> we have to draw more cards. All right. So why don't we set the tone here? Some spooky ambient sounds. Do do. All right. Oh. Yeah, those other sounds weren't too bad. Do you like those other sounds? Okay, I can well, bring they, them. Well, they, they were spooky enough. 
All right. All right, so we are at this party in the theme park. I'm a person in love. I'm going to call myself Penelope. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and I don't think I've been invited to this party, but I've come anyway because I'm coming to profess my love to you, the judge. The judge, okay. Mm hmm But you, you must be, but you're an imposter, so you must, uh, so, well, I don't know if, if this is, you're gonna reveal this later, are you Im impostering to get into the party or you have a, a further, more devious plot with this imposter stuff? Because um, there's a party, so maybe you could, are you impersonating a guest to get in or are you, or is your whole character an impersonation? I am impar uh, impersonating a guest. Okay. So I am okay. I'm showing up as, let's say, a groundskeeper for the, the park. <laughs> groundskeeper, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's an employee's party, okay. Mm-hmm. For the eccentrically rich judge, for some reason. <laughs> All right. So. Do we, do, we, do we just continue, or do we draw cards where we run out of ideas, or is it just every go? Um, when you feel that you need to draw another card. So, like, if you can continue building out the story based off what you got, then we can keep going. I, I think it needs another element, because right now we, we've set the scene, and we know that there's this mysterious zoo animal near the, the roller coaster. All right. But what it does, we don't know that. Then so we, we need an action, there, like some verbs. Motorcycle. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. So, I decide to make my grand entrance on a motorcycle, and I feel that as I am getting ready to go and I start to get really nervous, like maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe once I tell him I love him, he's not gonna love me back, but what do I do? And that's when I'm spotted by the zoo animal. Hello, groundskeeper. How's your day today? Welcome to the party. Oh, it's it's fabulous. I'm so glad that you've noticed that I am a groundskeeper because of my special clothing that I have that is groundskeeper-y. <laughs> yeah, I forget, I forget your name. What was it again? Uh, um, it is Pam. Ah, I am Pam. 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 I, I, yes. I forget, you know, there's so many uh, employees. I'm, gl I'm glad you make it. Everyone else, you know, they wanted to go do other things on the weekend, you know, instead of coming back to work again. Yeah, yeah, you know, but I I love this job and I love my boss. I mean, working for him, he's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a great guy. <laughs> um, so I was getting ready to go on to this motorcycle here. I thought I, uh, I could make a grand entrance, but no. You already have. Oh, oh, I see that I have. Because we're I talking, just... so you've already arrived, so. I guess I just got so caught up in the moment that I didn't even realize I drove in here. Yeah, I, I didn't even know you could ride a motorcycle. I thought, you know, that, that accident as a child mean, meant that you could never... Uh... I'm trying to face my fears more okay, these days. Okay, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. And I'm gonna go for another card. A letter to the editor. So it seems I've received a letter, mm -hmm. suddenly. Have you, have you delivered this letter? I might have. All right. <laughs> and and uh, is, is there any, um, is there a name on it? Who's, who's it from? Or is it mysteriously just left blank? It's mysteriously left blank, and I tell you to meet me by the roller coaster. Okay, so the letter says, Dear Judge, because <laughs> he's just the judge. Uh-huh. No name. Meet me by the roller coaster. Oh, that's strange. I wonder who this could be. A secret admirer, perhaps? I don't know. You should probably go meet that person and find out. Oh, look at the time. I have to suddenly leave. <laughs> yeah, but I've been heard strange reports of zoo animals over by the roller coaster. I, I should be careful. I'll protect you with my life. <laughs> okay, so you're coming along then? Um, what? No, I mean, I've, I'm sure whoever you're meeting will protect you with their life. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I will just uh, mosey on over to the roller coaster, and let's see if I run into anything along the way. Ooh. Oh, it, it literally says interrupted. <laughs> Everyday ritual is interrupted. My going to the roller coaster has been interrupted, clearly by the zoo animal. What is the zoo animal, though? 
Hmm. Maybe it's like a hybrid that you've been working on. Oh, I'm also a mad scientist? Yes, on the side. Yeah, I'm a centric judge mad scientist. I've done I've done my research on you. Oh. You're quite the interesting specimen. <laughs> my creation, you've gotten loose. What are you doing? You need to get back to your cage. Unfortunately, Master, that is not in the cards today. I'm breaking free, and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Damn. I'll have to use my best judgment. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a. I'm running to the roller coaster, and if I can get on, as long as I get in one seat ahead of my creation, I think I'll be okay. We'll just have to find out. Yes, and we will find out after this <laughs> break. hot in the summer we ain't got much else to do but listen to the radio there's a country station and there's another country station there's a bluegrass station but mostly it's just the country stations so i like to listen to ksfs because it's free for all radio and anything that's free well dadgum gotta get me some of that ksfs free for all welcome back to gator tech this is Steven Crane. And this is Mercedes. We were just uh, working on a little story here where there is a judge on the run for his life from a mysterious animal that apparently he's created because he's also a mad scientist. Yes. Yes, indeed. And we um, have a run in with an imposter that m is in love but has snuck into his party that he was hosting at this theme park. How will the story unfold? Find out now. So. The judge has just ran, ran towards the roller coaster. And he runs right past Penelope, his love, or his hopefully love. She loves him. <laughs> yes, we don't know about the judge. He's just neutral so far. Yes. He's running for his life. He cares about that right now. So as he runs by, does Penelope say anything or do anything? Uh, judge, wait. Um, where are you going? Gangway! Oh my god, there's a monster. They climb into a car together, and the ride Hit begins. Hit the switch! <laughs> <I> <laughs> the ride begins, but the beast is not far behind. It stops just in time to get into the third car past them. He's right on our tail. I don't know where we'll go from here, Judge. Hold on, we got a loop de loop coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it looks like we're behind him. He doesn't know it yet. Oh, geez. Now, now he's in the first car because he fell. He didn't buckle up. So. Oh, that's probably a terrible idea. It's only a matter of time before he realizes that we're behind him, though. Okay, what should, what's our next plan of action? Um. What is it? It is... Fishing boat! That fishing boat down there. <laughs> if we jump <laughs> not to the boat next to it in the water, then we can get in the fishing boat and make our escape. That sounds like a plan. We both unbuckle at the same time. On three. One, two, three. Draw. Splash. <laughs> All right, let's climb up into the boat. Has he noticed us? I don't think so. All right, better start the, the motor. <laughs> it started? I think so, Oh, yeah. it started, okay, we're <laughs> headed off into the sunset. Um, so, so, oh, it, Penelope, I remember you. Oh, you My do? My old acquaintance. Yes. Um, I was actually... It's a good thing you were here. I mean, <laughs> if, if, I, if you weren't here, I would have died. Well, I'm the judge happy died. to save your life, judge, always. 
I actually had something I wanted to tell you. I was the one that left you that mysterious note to meet me by the roller coaster. Well, well why? I'm here to profess my love to you, Judge. Your love? Yes. Hmm. I don't know what to say. Well, it would be cool if you, you said that you felt the same, but, you know, that's just a, f a thing. <laughs> well, let's find out. I'm afraid you're in for a drought. <laughs> for I love another. <laughs> no! Oh, well, I guess we could, we could be friends for now. Maybe sometime in the future when your current relationship doesn't work out. Okay, sounds good enough. Oh, yay! <laughs> and they ride off into the sunset. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, I had to do the card for it just to see. <laughs> and it's perfect. All right. So we're going to go ahead and head into another break. But after that, you can tune back in for another Round game of, of The Story Matic. Orphan Orchestra. I haven't heard the radio since the sun went away, but now the sun shines every day. I'll be a sunshine, little ray of sunshine, if you listen to KSFS. Radio Free For All. Hi, I'm Daniel Martinez from Wednesday Nights. And I'm Mina from Spotlight. We may not agree on everything. But we do agree that variety of music and entertainment make for some damn good radio. Damn ass good. And when it comes to variety, we've got it all. We've got it all. We got it all. On KSFS. Welcome back to Gator Tech on KSFS. This is Steven. And Mercedes. So if you've been tuning in, you've been able to hear uh, our first attempt at the story Matic. <laughs> it was a tale of horror at a theme park <laughs> and love and uh, a beast, which we just kind of disappeared. Yeah. Probably still stuck on yeah. that roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I had to have the Scooby Doo. We go to loop, and then we're in different seats. I like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so why don't you start this round with a couple of cards, and then I'll I'll do the follow up character. All right. Let's see here. This one here. All right. So my character is an organ recipient and a bad driver. Okay. Let's see what we got here. I have. A fire bug, which I don't know what that means, <laughs> and a person in denial. Um, and since I don't know, I'm just going to put this back and get something else. All right. A police officer. I, I am just in the legal field today. <laughs> a police officer in denial about something yet to be determined. All right. So let's do the action cards here. Wig, pressured to skinny dip. All right. Wig, you said? Wig, yes. Okay. IG, not H, not the political thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I, I know, I know, I know. All right. You going to go? Okay. You know? Well, I, I, I know what, what I'm in denial about. All right. Okay, so my name is Lauren. And I'm driving home from another doctor's appointment uh, after my, s um, it's another check-in post-surgery. I just got a new organ. And I'm kind of swerving all over the roads. I'm a little nervous. And, yeah. Well, clearly, as a police officer, I'm going to have to pull you over. 
All right. I pull to the side. I'm a little nervous. I've never been pulled over before. I approach the side of the vehicle, adjusting my wig. <laughs> Ma'am, do you, know, do, you, do you know why I stopped you tonight? Um, oh, I have a theory, but uh, before we go on, do you have a wig? You look awfully young for a wig. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a wig. Uh, I've, I just adjusted my hat real quick. Oh. You know, it's important to look uh, your best when you're a police officer. You you represent, you know, the government of the local principality. I mean, um... Um, that is true, yeah. Uh, I, I understand I'm a little swervy. I, I dropped my coffee and I was trying to clean it up, so... I mean, even if, even if that's the case, do you know how fast you were going? Um, no, actually. My speedometer's broken. You want to take a guess? I'd say about 60. 60? Yeah, that's... In a school zone. Oh! Well, I'm sorry. I'm a little flustered right now. I mean... I'm I think you might need to cut back on that coffee. Maybe. Maybe. Well, if you need to give me a ticket, I mean, I know it's your job. But do I? Well, uh... I could give you a ticket, but I've been working on this letter to the editor about the, <laughs> this, this story. It's, it's about uh, police encounters, okay? And I'm writing anonymously, and uh, if I could get a first-hand account, uh, so you, maybe you I could let you off. You want to know how I feel about this exchange? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, we're not looking to generate a lot of revenue here, so we can let some people off. Okay, well, yeah, um... I mean, you didn't hit any of the kids this time. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, well, thank God. But um, let me see. How do I feel? Um, bad directions. Um, I feel that I shouldn't have been pulled over because, you know, the signs, th they're not very clear. And oh, they're obscured by foliage or whatever. Yes, yes, I they I've are. I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot. So I, I think that maybe this is a little unfair. I mean, you've been you've been awfully kind enough not to give me the ticket, but, you know, I just... Well, I, I haven't agreed yet. I mean, we're, we're working on that. Oh. Oh, well, then I don't know how I feel. Maybe I feel a little attacked. Attacked, eh? Yeah, I feel a little um, uncomfortable. I come, um, uncomfortable enough to roll up my window right now, slowly, so that you feel dumb. Also, I'm going to take your wig as I do it. What was that they're doing there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what was it doing there, officer? You uh, look ridiculous. Like I, 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 th I have here. I just shaved my head. It's a, it's a look. It's a it look. It makes me intimidating. Okay, it's the I'm same not reason I grow this mustache. You, you look ridiculous. You're a, a bald man with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's that's, that's tough. The handlebar mustache. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, that's that's why you see all the, all the biker dudes at, at those bars that always wear this outfit and uh, <laughs> with the mustache and, and the hat and the, the sunglasses. It's a look. It's for tough guys. Yeah, I think you're in denial a little bit. I had that last round. I had that literally. Are these all the same card? Literally, Motor did all the cards go to the, the front here? Or I they're just like, okay. Suppose, uh, well, how do you intend to prove that? Nobody's watching here other than us. How do no I one intend will believe to prove you. that? Hmm. What if I told you that I'm actually an escaped convict? So I know what tough looks like. And dude, you are not tough at all. I'm thinking about writing that ticket. I'm thinking that you probably won't write the ticket because if I step out of this car right now, you're gonna have to worry about more things than that handlebar mustache making you look ridiculous. <sighs> Maybe. I'll let you go this time. You're darn right you'll let me go. But also, there's a certain charm to you 
I'd like to ask for your number. Here's my card. <laughs> Perfect. Time jump. <laughs> I'm at home later, and I'm thinking, should I or should I not call that police officer? Third day without sleep. Because of that, or some, something different? <laughs> I could do for some conversation. I mean, I'm trying this new thing where I don't sleep at night, and I see how far I can go. Apparently, seven days is, is as long as you should go. So I give you a ring. Ring, ring. Hello? This is Officer Smith. All right, Mr. Smith, I'm going to cut right to the chase. You pulled me over earlier, and I thought you were interesting. I think we should go out sometime. With a criminal? Yes. What will they say down at the station? That you're uh, not afraid. That you're brave. You're a brave person. What was this offense that you committed? It's important that I know before I can uh, put my career on the line. I discovered something in my father's glove box. <laughs> it was a bloody knife. And I turned him in. Well, that doesn't make you a criminal. It does if the only fingerprints on the knife are mine. See, he cleaned it, and then I touched it directly. Well, uh, well I mean, what about the glove? Did it fit? I... It did. My father has very small hands. Yeah. And I also have So they very could not equip hands. them. <laughs> yeah, so I was convicted for my father's crime. I mean, it was a crime of passion, you know. I mean, you you didn't take the fall on purpose. I mean, it just happened that way. And what of him? He he felt so guilty that he ran away to Italy and no one has heard from him since. He could be dead by now. Oh, lovely father. <sighs> well, it sounds like you're innocent. It sounds like you've been framed. I have been framed. So I'll, uh, just this once, I'll give it a shot. Oh, thank God. Uh, when? Like around now? or? Yes, right now. Okay, okay. Uh, ho hold on just a sec. Uh, honey, I I'll be gone for a bit. Um, I'll get back l uh, later tonight, though, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so so where are we heading? Oh, uh, I guess we're heading to dinner. Let's go to dinner. Okay, great. After this break, everybody. <laughs> All right. We will be right back, and we will find out what happens at the dinner. But for now. We need. We need. Listen to a lovely. A lovely. KSFS PSA. PSA. Hello, son. I'm Dean Rubin from college. I'm here to invite you to join us this fall. Me? You've always wanted to go to college, correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's that invitation you've been waiting for. Joey! 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 Out of bed! Wake up. You can't dream your way into college. There are actual steps you need to take. For all the steps, visit knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation for Education, and the Ag Council. Every three minutes, another woman gets the news that she has breast cancer. And here are some of the first words she hears. Her two new oncogene, aromatase inhibitor, ductal carcinoma in situ. What do these words mean? How are you going to decide what to do if you can't even say what you have? Please listen to me, Marvin Hamlish. As soon as you get your diagnosis, go to breastcancer.org. It's a special place on the internet where you can learn how to say all those breast cancer words and find out what they mean. At breastcancer.org, you can learn more about your particular kind of cancer and your treatment options. Prepare a list of questions for your next doctor's visit and get all kinds of other useful information to guide you and your family through this. Breastcancer.org, the first place to go the minute you find out you have breast cancer. Some sounds of gang violence don't start until the day you're sentenced.
Welcome back to Gator Attack. This is Steven. And this is Mercedes. So just before we left off, we were getting ready to see um, the date-ish between... Officer uh, Smith. ...and Lauren. All right. So we meet at the town diner. A lovely establishment. So I'm, I'm so glad that you... Uh, met with me here, but I couldn't help overhearing over the phone you called someone else honey. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I shouldn't have tried this. I mean, why would you agree to come out on a date with me if you are with someone already? That's strange. Well, the excitement always gets to you. That's why you're on the force anyways. You want the excitement. The chase. So so you, you want to have an affair? <laughs> yes, exactly. What? <laughs> it's um, like, I, I don't want criminals to give up. I want them to run. I want them to fight. I want the excitement. It's no fun if it's just, uh, you know, if everything's business as usual. I'm it's not too easy. sure this is something that I had planned to sign up for. This is kind of, wow. <laughs> You're already a criminal. Oh, Okay, I'm already a criminal, so um, I don't have any values. <laughs> of course not. You know what? Let's let's it's just. There's us and there's them. How about we take a picture? Okay. With your phone. Okay. Here, Seems I'll fine. Uh, I'll 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 take it. Here, here you go. <laughs> Smiles. Cheese. <laughs> Little does Officer Smith know, Lauren just sent that picture to his wife with the caption, He's not who you think he is. <laughs> oh, look at that. You got a text. I wonder who that's from. Oh. It's like, honey, we need to talk. Huh. That's strange. You don't think she found out. Uh, about my hair. <laughs> I, it's not true. I, I shave it. I, I swear. I don't know. Maybe she found out about that or that you actually are a terrible husband. <laughs> no, I'm not a terrible husband. You're, you're on a date with some criminal right now. That's totally fine. That, what? I'm you above the law. any sense. I can, I can hang out with criminals. I can hang out with regular people. I can do as I please. Hmm. Well, little did you know, <laughs> surprise <laughs> twist. What is this twist? I never was let out of jail. I escaped. Now you're an accomplice. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're here now. There's picture evidence. And once they see that my picture is with you, because my picture is already running all over the news. I'm surprised you hadn't seen that. Uh, people are going to start to question, um, why were you at the town diner with Lauren? They'll think that I was the smartest one, the first one on the case, if I can capture you. Mm hmm. Well, uh, while you were in the bathroom, I took your handcuffs, your gun, and your badge. So now you don't have anything. Or do I? I'm going to attempt to subdue the criminal. Darn it. I didn't know that you were a black belt in karate. There's no I way I had either. any chance. <laughs> that surprise kick to the face just came out of nowhere. Let's see. But guess what? <laughs> what? Today is your lucky day. I am not even a police officer. That was all just because it's actually a surprise party. It's your birthday. What? <laughs> this is ridiculous. I am definitely surprised. I'm surprised I didn't even notice that half of the people in this diner are my family members. Yeah. Wow. I wish you hadn't have like had to kick so, me so, in the face. But so <laughs> you escaped from prison? I mean, what? like no, I, I that thought was, uh, that was totally a, a lie that I made up. I mean, I mean that, that's, that's your guys' business. I mean, I, I already got paid for my little acting work, um, but uh, wow. I mean, like, 
Serious stuff. Serious stuff, indeed. Yeah, you, you might want to um continue on the run. There, they'll probably be. It's only a matter of time before they find you here. Oh, that is true. Well, it was nice seeing everyone here, and thank you so much for throwing me this party. I thought everyone had forgotten about my existence, let alone my birthday. This is so sweet of all of you. Thank you. Mm. And scene. Yes. <laughs> I was not expecting the surprise party. Neither was I, but that escape was actually the perfect <laughs> twist. <laughs> yes. See, I thought you could use the escape to escape being subdued, and that mm. you could, if you wanted to end it there, you could have oh, done that. Oh, darn. I should have. I should have. But it was definitely fun uh, doing this with mm -hmm. you. We'll have to try this again. This could actually be really good if we had like a third person too. I think it it really could. It gets. I think the more people you have, the easier because then person will add like a sentence and the other person build and build. Mm -hmm. But as a first test run, you were definitely great to work with. Yes, thank you very much. And with that, our lovely listeners, this has been Theater Attack. I am Mercedes. This is Stephen. And you thank you so much for listening. Yes. We will be back next Monday, 12 to this time, which is 12.54 right now. Um, enjoy the rest of your Monday. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will be looking forward to having you back next week. Yeah. Continue to tune in at kssmedia.net uh, slash radio. radio. Thank you.